I spent nine years learning to code in isolation and it almost destroyed my career. Now, I know a lot of you are self-taught developers, just like I'm a self-taught developer, and, and I still encourage you to be self-taught developers. But today I'm gonna to share with you three dangers of learning in isolation. And then at the end, we'll talk about how you can avoid learning in isolation and how that will help your career further down the road. Hey, Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. And part of launching that successful career is getting started off on the right foot and making sure that you are learning in the best way that you possibly can. Now, as I said at the beginning, I'm a self-taught dev. And so I know many of you are teaching yourself coding through tutorials, through YouTube videos and things like that. And that's a really good way to learn. But if we're not careful, we can end up becoming isolated in that learning process. See, I first really started being interested in turning this into a career back in 2005 when I first started hearing about this server-side language, call, language called PHP and, and MySQL for interacting with databases. And I wanted to take things deeper than that HTML class I had back in 1999. So from 2005, until about 2011, I did a lot of learning and a lot of growing and a lot of testing and a lot of writing code and a lot of building applications and a lot of building websites and trying to learn uh, new things like Joomla and WordPress and things like that. Then in 2011, I had the opportunity to actually do my first real big freelance project for a company. And I did that for almost three years. But at the end of those three years in 2014, I reached a breaking point. See, the contract that I had to work on that project was coming to an end, and I didn't have any idea where my next job was gonna be. In fact, I didn't even know for sure if I was worthy of working in a real development shop. Everything I had done had been based on my own learning. So I realized that even though I'd learned a lot and I'd been able to do some pretty cool things, in my opinion, working in isolation has some really big downsides. So the first danger of learning in isolation is that it decreases your exposure to new ideas and new concepts. Now that may sound weird because obviously everything that I was learning was brand new, but I was learning stuff that was old compared to everything else that was going on in the industry. Because I wasn't interacting with other people, I wasn't socializing with other people in the development world, I had no clue about things like version control. So when I actually thankfully got that first job and heard about Git and I had no clue what it was, I had to go research it. And I started actually interacting with, with team members, with other developers. And I was able to see, Hey, there's a whole lot of other things that are just kind of standard practices that I don't really know and don't really understand. And I had to learn a lot of things that most developers who'd gone through some sort of class or some sort of schooling with other people, they already knew those things. It was just part of the way that they did work. And so because I had done all of my learning in isolation, I really wasn't prepared as well as I could have been to take that first job. It's not because those things didn't exist. It's just because I didn't know to look for them. I didn't know they were out there. And so I never really had the opportunity to learn them because I was not aware of them. So learning in isolation decreases your exposure to new ideas and new concepts. Hey, thanks for letting me be a part of your developer journey. We're in the process of building a community where junior developers can grow their skills and take that next step in their career. So if you're finding this content helpful, would you help me get this message out to more people by clicking the like button? And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified the next time I upload a video or the next time I go live, which is every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central United States time. Also, don't forget you can take your involvement with the Dev Mentor Dave community to the next level by joining our Discord server via the link in the description. Thanks again for your help and I'll let you get back to the video. But the second danger to learning in isolation is that it decreases your exposure to constructive criticism. Now, believe me, I got plenty of criticism as a developer as I was learning on my own in isolation. In fact, Part of that time I actually worked for my brother and I got 
plenty of criticism from my brother as to when things didn't work quite the way that he wanted them to. But he's not a developer and he couldn't give me constructive criticism that would help me with my code, that would help me do things better from a coding perspective. Sure, he could tell me something didn't work right, but he didn't know why it didn't work right. He could just say, hey, this doesn't work the way that I wanted it to work. And I would be off on my own scouring the internet trying to figure out what the problem was. As developers, especially while we're learning, but really throughout our whole career, we need access to constructive criticism. And if all your learning is done as a, is done in isolation, it's all done in a vacuum, then you're not going to get access to constructive criticism. You might here and there get somebody to mention something on a GitHub repo that you have somewhere, but for the most part, you're not going to get constructive criticism on a consistent basis. And we really need that. We need people speaking into the work that we do to help us grow, to help us to see the things that we may not realize are problems. So learning in isolation decreases our exposure to constructive criticism. And lastly, and most importantly, learning in isolation decreases our exposure to support and encouragement. I'll be honest, there were many, many nights that I was up till 12, 1, 2, three o'clock in the morning during that period when I was trying to figure out why my code didn't work. And sometimes I was sitting there going, I don't know if I can even do this full time. In fact, when I reached the end of those nine years and realized I'd never worked for a real company before, I didn't know if I could do the job. I had no one telling me, hey, you're just as good as these other people out here doing this full time. I had no clue until I actually thankfully got into a real job with other developers and was able to look at how I did things and look at the abilities that I had to compare to what they were. And then I realized, yes, I can do this. But until I had that, I could have just quit. Not only do we need constructive criticism, but we need support and encouragement, especially during the learning process. That's why I love working with junior developers because there's so much to learn and it's so frustrating and it's so difficult but it's so cool to see that light bulb turn on and realize, hey, you're getting it and, and give that support and give that encouragement. That's what you need. You need constructive criticism. Yes, you need the ability to learn new things. Yes, but you also need people who are going to be in your corner cheering you on saying you can do this. So how can we prevent learning in isolation, especially if we're being a self-taught dev, if we're pretty much going through the process all on our own? Well, the first way to fix it is to find a mentor. And of course, the easiest place to get a mentor is at your job. If you're able to work for a company, for a development company early in your career, early in your learning process, to have somebody there who is able to, to mentor you along the way, to give you that support and give you that constructive feedback and introduce you to those things that you don't know about yet because it just wasn't part of the things that you found on YouTube. You need that encouragement on a daily basis. So it, it may not be at your job. Maybe you're going through a boot camp or some other learning center where you're learning with other people. You're learning with an instructor, somebody who you can interact with on a on a regular basis. That really is the key. You need see somebody in your life that you can interact with on a regular basis. It's going to give you those things that you're going to miss if you're just doing it in isolation. If you don't have access to a teacher or a mentor or somebody like that, then just work on projects with other devs. Don't work on projects all by yourself. You can some, of course, but spend time, spend quality time working with other developers, communicating with other developers, getting feedback from other developers. Now, if you can do that with senior developers, that's much better because they have more experience, but even do it with junior developers, even if that's all that you have, because you always have the opportunity to learn something from someone else. And of course, if you don't have that, you can join the project that we're doing here, the Deep Pockets project, and you can join the Discord channel via the link in the description of this video. That's exactly why I created this channel. That's exactly why I created the Discord server is because I wanted to create a place, a community where junior developers can feel safe, but where they can grow outside of isolation. Yes, we have to spend time on our own practicing and working, but if you do that completely in isolation, you're going to reach a point where eventually you think you can't do the job. And that's where I was after nine years of isolation. And I don't want you to be in that same position.
Hey, I hope this video has been a help to you on your development journey. And if it has, if you would click the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Helps YouTube know, hey, people are interested in this and it'll send it to more people. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon to be notified the next time I go live or the next time I upload a video. I'll see you on the next one.